In 1986, Clive Barker wrote a novella called The Hellbound Heart, which would become the basis of his directorial debut, the infamous gorehound horror classic, Hellraiser. Referenced a few times, and it's like nostalgic acupuncture in my brain. On the show, before now. What is your pleasure, mm. It's a story of, uh... Um... This guy, and this guy's wife, who is hopelessly thirsty for his brother Frank. And so they bang, but sometime later, Frank comes into possession of a puzzle box that opens doorways into another dimension, and then come the Cenobites, who take you and torture you forever. I think that's the best summary I can come up with, but if you want a rundown of the whole series, Hellraiser 2 is when Frank's niece is in a mental hospital, but her doctor is trying to open the box because he's crazy, and then Julia, her evil stepmother, comes back in a scene so violent I can't even show it. But then, uh, they go to Hell, which is all like this, and the Cenobites worship Leviathan, which is... You know, it gets a lot easier to describe this series when it starts to suck. You guys want to know what pain is like? Marathon the Hellraiser movies. I dare you to find a series with worse sequels. Hellraiser 3 turns Pinhead into a Hollywood slasher villain. Hellraiser 4, an Alan Smithy film, is a disaster where Pinhead hunts the descendants of the person who created the puzzle box and might as well be a completely different series and also in space. And then Hellraiser 5 is about a super brilliant detective who's an asshole, so he gets trapped in a pinhead mind game forever. Do you see this with the Kung Fu Cowboys? This is the best Hellraiser movie after Hellraiser 2. Weirdly, the guy who directed this went on to make Doctor Strange. And then Hellraiser 6 is about Kirsty Cotton's husband, who is an asshole, who gets trapped in a pinhead mind game forever. And I couldn't tell you what happened in Hellraiser 7 if you put a gun to my head. Hellraiser 8 is Hellworld? and it's really fucking bad. This is where the shit hits the fan, guys. Ooh. Wait, that's fucking Superman. Hellraiser 9 is about a studio trying to keep the rights to a franchise they're not using, so they throw 50 bucks at a sequel, and it's goddamn atrocious. And then Hellraiser, I don't remember the subtitle of the one that came after 9, it was like, so what do you do with this? Like everything, you make a video game for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Legend has it that it was designed by Color Dreams, the people behind unlicensed Nintendo games that bypassed the lockout chips with special cartridges. It was reported that they paid upwards of $50,000 for the license, this fly-by-night developer. That's not even the weird part, no. It ran on what was described as, quote, an improved version of the Wolfenstein 3D engine on the NES. And you're wondering, Man, they only barely got Wolfenstein 3D on the Super Nintendo. How are they going to get it on an 8-bit console? Evil finds a way, kids. They prototyped the Super Cartridge, some Frankenstein's monster tech that contained a Z80 processor and four extra megabytes of RAM. The NES had two kilobytes of RAM. Now, I don't believe in fairy tales, kids, so when I heard about this, I was skeptical to say the least. For one thing, this game was canceled in 1990, almost two years before Wolfenstein 3D would hit shelves. However, Color Dreams would rebrand a year after the failure of Hellraiser. They became a little company called Wisdom Tree. That's right, the creators of Super Noah's Ark 3D. I'm sorry, Super 3D Noah's Ark. Listen, there is a right place to put 3D in the title of your game. It is at the end. We are men, we are not animals. Now, Wolf 3D did come out on the Super Nintendo, ported by it themselves. However, Nintendo required it to be heavily censored. It didn't take kindly to this, which is alleged to be the reason why they let Color Dreams or Wisdom Tree use the engine to make some half-assed Bible game, an unlicensed one, just to burn Nintendo. I think I was being a little unfair by calling this half-assed. This game is okay. They put their whole ass into this. Good job, Wisdom Tree. I'm not saying that id Software co-founder and keeper of the Forbidden Code, master of the anti-life equation John Carmack, traveled back in time to try and burn Nintendo with a satanic game being hacked onto the console that saved the home gaming industry after the fall of Atari. But I want you to look me in the eye and tell me he couldn't. But the prototype was lost. Some say it was quarantined by the government. Its power's too much for the average consumer to bear without their soul being rended. Look at this thing. Your average color dreams knock off plastic case with this... thing sitting on the bottom. I guess that's where all the super parts are stored. Time to play. Okay, it says here, because it's one of those hacked, unlicensed cartridges, to start the game, wait up to nine flashes on the TV screen.
Oh, come the fuck on with this now. Come with us, and we will show you pain. I, I can't understand what you're trying to say. I'll tear your soul apart. What are you gonna do, bit crush me to death? Oh wow, look at that, I got a hook through the hand, is that it? Is that all you got? Let me tell you something, I wake up in the morning. Or whenever I wake up, I can't really tell anymore. I say to myself, man, I hope somebody puts a hook through my hand today. That would be a nice break, you bunch of vanilla motherfuckers. This game is clearly unfinished, but also it's very, very ugly. My God, it's ugly. AVGN may have beaten me to Chex Quest, but I beat him to the fucking Hellraiser cartridge. I don't know what they were thinking, but I guess it's an advanced version of the Wolfenstein 3D engine. The floor isn't just a solid color. Some concessions had to be made for the performance. I meant about 10 FPS on average, which is, you know, shit. But you see the window there, right? The awful colors, the sluggish movement. I didn't know what I was getting into. This seems easy enough. You go in, grab the box, and you're whisked away to... Somewhere. I can't begin to describe how bad the controls are. Remember strafing? Yeah, even the original Wolf 3D you could strafe, but now, what button do you think you're gonna use for that, huh? Guess. You give up? It's none. Because the NES controller has a D-pad, a start button, a select button, and an A and B button. A is shoot, B is use. There's no strafing. What did I even expect? You go through these mazes and you shoot eyeballs. Yes, floating eyeballs. I should have known. They did do that effect, like in the movie when you use the box on them and they go all electric yellow and disappear. You don't have health like in Wolfenstein, you get five hit points. And these eyeballs are barely able to hit you, so why all these blood vials for pickups? When they do hit you, it's bullshit Wolf 3D hit scan damage? Yeah, you know the kind. I'm glad I did a Wolf 3D video now before getting to this. To get out of each level, you have to hit some switches, and a message comes up on the screen that says how many sacrifices remain. This game is actually sadomasochistic enough to make the switches that you need to hit in order to progress hurt you. You get all your health back at the beginning of each stage, but... Oh, we'll get to it, don't you worry. The levels themselves are usually fairly small, nothing like you'd see in Wolf 3D. It doesn't look like they even got doors working. Secret walls are here, though. The only thing that makes this look like an advanced version of the Wolfenstein engine is that it's dark as shit and the floor is shaded instead of a solid color. It's giving me good old Corridor 7 flashbacks because I don't remember good games. So that's the first five maps of Hellraiser, shooting eyeballs and hitting switches until it lets you leave. So far, it's ugly, it feels bad to play, there's nothing I would call design when it comes to the level layouts. There's no map, no save feature as far as I can tell. No live system. I've read some lore on the game saying that it traps you in the puzzle box with the Cenobites. I guess that's what's going on? Once you get to level 5, I'm sorry, layer 5, it's time for a boss, a creature from the movie. It's... Oh god, they couldn't add something to make that not sound so shitty. I mean, the music sounds alright. In fact, this is a pretty good tune. This is actually a great 8-bit rendition of Hellraiser music, and they play it every now and then. You shoot at it. A lot. And it goes away and you can leave. Really blowing me away with this prototype, guys. I guess we're in episode two now, it's not much different. The boss of episode two is Pinhead. He's a little early, isn't he? Did you get owned by Dr. Channard again? 
This takes forever. And not being able to strafe makes dodging his projectiles pretty difficult. Blue balls, not like chains or anything. Yeah, there you go. Get zapped away. A flunky boss in your own game, you fucking loser. Episode 3. The one where it gets mean. Great, right? You didn't think they could add instant death pits into an engine that doesn't have height, but they did. You can see all the blood switches, but you have to find a way to get to them, obviously. There's a secret wall here. Here's the problem. With your, uh, enhanced floor and ceiling shading effects, can't see the goddamn things coming! Oh, but wait, look who's back! You can stand your ground and shoot this bastard again, or you can try to lead him off because he's blocking the exit. Ugh, what a fucking chore. Oh, please God, no. What the fuck? Okay, I see. You hit me with the real pain now. Navigating this shit while avoiding the floating eyeballs. So I've been replaying this. I don't remember anything else. You inch around these pits because everything is on a grid, and if you even touch that 64 by 64 pixel area, instant death. Oh man, we're almost there. We're almost there. No, 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 no. If you press the wrong wall, it blocks off the exit. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm calling the pit episode up until the boss fight. I can't! I can't kill him, he's invincible! And he one-hits me! And also, that's not a character from the Hellraiser universe, unless there was some kind of crossover event I'm not aware of. I've seen Baby Yoda Pinhead, I have not seen Mario Pinhead. I... I... You can't kill him. You have to go around him, hit the blood switches, which opens not a puzzle box, but a question block for the exit. Was Color Dreams trying to get sued? The fourth and final episode has some new scenery, which I think is trying to look like the last act of Hellraiser 2, where they go into the other dimension, except it really can't look like that because you don't have, like, depth. Here is where the game introduces these things, which I think are supposed to be like skinless dudes, like Uncle Frank. And then this first area and all the ones after this have the blood switches semi-hidden or super hard to find. You have to go through secret wall stuff. Oh, fuck you! They don't die. They go down, you wait, they get back up, and this game doesn't have the courtesy to give me a grenade launcher to deal with them. So I can use this box to get rid of floating eyeballs, other giant monsters, and Pinhead? Just not skinless dudes in Mario? Cool. The way they attack is, it's like a melee attack, but they just keep hitting you and, oh. There's only one of them in this level, there's four in the next one. So I gotta juggle these things while donating blood, and then the penultimate level throws everything at you. A huge maze filled with eyeballs and red bastards and even... After wandering around this map for nearly half an hour, trying to find my way back after hitting all the switches, I'm rewarded by the final boss. Who could it be? Satan? That homeless bum who eats bugs? The Doc from Hellraiser 2? Nah, close. It's... Leviathan! The giant diamond that emits darkness. Except, not giant. It shoots you, and because you can't strafe, it's fucking nearly impossible to actually survive it. Or tell if you're doing any kind of damage. Why would you make the final boss a stationary non-character? Who asked for this? Oh, no, wait. It, of course. If you stand right here, the projectiles are too big to get past the wall.
Congratulations, you have defeated the evil Pinhead and his devilish Cenobites. You are truly a Hellraiser? Color Dream salutes you, the most radical of dudes. <sighs> no, I get it. I get it now. Color Dreams rebranded right after this to do Bible games as penance to save their souls after unleashing this onto the world. And now, you have passed the tip. You are ready for the real stuff. Time to play again. Oh, you know what? Hold that thought. Yeah, I don't know. It's in a black cartridge, but it works on an old Famicom top loader, so, uh... Uh-huh. Okay, cool. I just thought I'd let you know. No! No! Your pleasure, sir.